Well, good morning to you all, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's good to be with you all once more as we gather again for our time of prayer. Today is Tuesday the 23rd of February and I'm back with my iPad in the Vicarage study having had that failed attempt with the PC yesterday. Apologies, some of you said that uh, the sound wasn't great and I kept cutting out every few seconds so apologies if that was the case and hopefully all is well today. Now today in the church we remember the life of Saint Polycarp and uh, a wonderful man in the early church and you probably don't know anything about him perhaps never heard his name before and it means many much fruit in Greek and indeed his life did bear much fruit so if you don't know anything about Saint Polycarp and even if you do I'm going to say a little about him now he's one of my favorite early saints and here's a little bit about him. When Polycarp was 86 years old he was bound, slain by the sword and his body burnt in the area at Smyrna in what's now Turkey in front of a crowd baying for his blood. He was one of the first Christian martyrs and according to his own account had been a believer since childhood. His words at his trial when he was asked to swear against God have echoed down the centuries as a testimony of one man's obedience to Christ. And these are lovely words, these. For 86 years I've been his servant, and he has never done me wrong. How can I blaspheme my King who saved me? Originally one of the disciples of John, Polycarp is therefore a link between the Apostles and the earliest Church Fathers. Accounts of his martyrdom were circulated from very soon after his death and give witness to the early Church tradition of venerating martyrs as saints. Polycarp is remembered as an example of humility under persecution and as a man who showed true Christ-like character throughout his life. In his letters, he exhorts the, church, exhorts the church to pray for those that persecute them and are in authority over them. He writes, pray also for kings and powers and rulers and for them that persecute, persecute you and hate you and for the enemies of the cross, that your fruit may be manifest unto all, that you may be perfect in him. Lovely words to take into our time of prayer as we remember today the life and witness and martyrdom of Polycarp. So as we gather for our prayers, let's light a candle. If you've got a candle with you wherever you are, please do feel you can light that now. A light, a light in the name of the Maker, who lit the world and breathed the breath of light for me. A light, a light in the name of the Son, who saved the world and stretched out his hands for me. I will light a light in the name of the Spirit, who sanctifies the world and blesses my soul with yearning. We will light three lights for the Trinity of love, God above us, God beneath us, God beside us, the beginning, the end, the everlasting one. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. So let's turn to our psalm now. We're going to use Psalm 28, which is the psalm we're using all week. And uh, just bear with me, I've left my book in the bookcase, so uh, a moment while I get that. Some of you will be able to see the words on the screen, or you may have the version that we use uh, from Common Worship, and if so, then 
do join in as we pray together Psalm 28. To you I call, O Lord my rock, be not deaf to my cry, lest if you do not hear me I become like those that go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my prayer when I cry out to you. When I lift up my hands to your holy of holies, do not snatch me away with the evil, with the wicked, with the evil doers, who speak peaceably with their neighbours while malice is in their hearts. Repay them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their devices. Reward them according to the work of their hands and pay them their just deserts. They take no heed of the Lord's doings nor of the work of his hands. Therefore shall he break them down and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord for he has heard the voice of my prayer. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart has trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore my heart dances for joy and in my song will I praise him. The Lord is the strength of his people. A safe refuge for his anointed. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them and carry them for ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. So let's turn to our reading now, which is today from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, the parable of the wedding banquet, followed by the reflection uh, today from hashtag Live Lent. So Jesus said to the dinner guest who asked him, someone gave a great dinner and invited many. At the time for the dinner he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of land and I must go out and see it. Please accept my regrets. Another said, I've brought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to try them out. Please accept my regrets. Another said, I have just been married and therefore I cannot come. So the slave returned and reported to this to the master. Then the owner of the house became angry and said to his slave, go out at once into the streets and lanes of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. And the slave said, Sir, what you ordered has been done and there is still room. Then the master said to the slave, Go out into the roads and lanes and compel people to come in so that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those who are invited will taste my dinner. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in this parable, a wealthy man has planned a wonderful party. He's invited all the great and good of that area. But in the event, all the important invited guests have other things to do. So the host flings wide the door, sending out his messenger to invite literally everybody, whoever they might be. We get a picture of God who is not content to include just the powerful or wealthy or even religious people, but who flings open the doors of the heavenly party and sends out to invite everyone in, whoever they may be and wherever they may come from. 
but don't forget the vital role of the messenger. Without him going into the streets and giving the message that the banquet is here and the doors are wide open, nobody would have known to come. This sharing of God's invitation is what the church calls evangelism. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you that you invite everyone into your great feast. Help all those whom you invite to hear your invitation and to receive it with joy. Amen. And so we pray for all those we know and love who we long for them to hear and receive and listen to the message of the kingdom. And we pray for our own role as messengers through our words and through our deeds opening up that invitation to others. As we remember today St Polycarp, we give thanks for his life and his witness. We pray for all who still suffer persecution for their faith today, that they may, like Polycarp, be true to God's calling and his love. We pray for strength and courage in the face of that persecution and difficulty. We pray for all those groups and organisations that seek to encourage and support Christians in parts of the world where they suffer persecution Father, we pray this day for the peace of the world. We call to mind those tribes, those cultures, those nations where conflict is rife. So in particular for the people of the Yemen, of Syria, Father, we pray this day for the unity of your church, which is your, your promise to us, your gift to us, your hope for us. Pray that we may find ways of working together to proclaim your kingdom and to serve the communities in which we're found. We give thanks for our fellow Christians who worship in different churches in our local area. For the ministers meeting together tomorrow. And as we begin to look forward in hope at the easing of lockdown measures, we continue to pray, Lord, for our leaders and for this country. Loving God, your Son, Jesus Christ, came that we might have life and have it abundantly. Pour out your blessing upon our nation. Where there is illness, bring your healing touch. Where there is fear, Strengthen us with the knowledge of your presence. Where there is uncertainty, build us up in faith. Where there is dishonesty, lead us into truth. Where there is discord, may we know the harmony of your love. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 
And so let's keep silent for time as we offer to God perhaps those we might be called to be evangelists towards and offer to him all that's on our hearts at this time. And so we pray too for the people in our own communities and churches and today for the people of Allerton, remembering especially Helen and Paddy and family, Lindsay and her family, Ian, Sarah, Freddie and Izzy, Philip, Ted and Jean, Gina, Brian, James, Jess and Joe, Annabelle, Andrew, Xavi and Caleb. Pray for John and Tracy, for Anne, for Kate, for Emily and Tom and their family, for Tom, for Luke and Sarah and family, for Sarah and Tim and their family. Pray for Sheila, for Angie and John and for Doris. So the collect uh, for St Polycarp as we remember him today. Almighty God, who gave to your servant Polycarp boldness to confess the name of our Saviour Jesus Christ before the rulers of the world and courage to die for his faith, grant that we also may be ready to give an answer for the faith that is in us and to suffer gladly for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and, alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my brothers and sisters, thank you for being part of our time of prayer this morning. Uh, it's good to see a, a number of people saying hello. And uh, so I need to welcome to say hello to Helen, to Angela, to Dot, to Susan, to uh, hello to Elizabeth, to Susie, to Mary, and to Angie, and I'm sure to others. So uh, find your names up on the screen. Today it's the day when I have my cycle prayer pilgrimage, a wheel and a prayer, and I'll be out and about around the benefice, stopping at the subsettlements, the villages, the hamlets that make up our benefice and praying for the people who live there. Uh, I'll put something up on the Facebook page in a moment as to uh, where and when I'll be, and please do feel free to come out and join me at any of the stops and we can pray together. Uh, don't forget also Sam's Lent course. You can find the first of the videos up on our YouTube channel and uh, you can follow that on your own or if you want to be part of a group, there's one meeting this evening and one meeting on Thursday evening. And uh, So you're going to need to hurry to, to get in contact to book in for one of those if you want to be part of a, a group during Lent. That's it, I think, for this morning. I'll be back tomorrow morning at nine o'clock for some further time of prayer. We'll be looking at the next parable and the next reflection in hashtag Live Lent. And in the meantime, everyone, do take care and God bless. <laughs>